Hello everyone, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. This is part two of my B-Day series of videos. There's gonna be two more parts. One is gonna be an exposed B-Day that we're gonna put on this piece here. And the fourth and final video, I'll be installing one of these B-Days in my own home in the bathroom job series that we're currently filming as well. So they kind of overlap a little bit, okay? Now we've already covered how to get this frame on the wall and how to get that fitted, but this is what we're gonna do in today's video. I'm gonna show you how to do the first fix of a B-Day valve and also pipe up the water to the concealed B-Day feed pipe at the back of this toilet B-Day unit. I'm going to show you why this complies with British standards when it comes to water backflow, how easy it is to hang a B-Day toilet onto one of these frames and how to commission the B-Day spout and adjust the flush so you get a perfectly working B-Day toilet. All the tools I use in this video are available on our Amazon store. Links to that and Vitra's website below. Remember, you can learn more about B-Days and the plumbing in your own home by visiting our interactive house. Hold tight. So in that first video, I showed you how to install the toilet bidet AquaCare Beast from Vitra that had the valve integrated into the side of the toilet that for me, I've not really seen. I was really interested with some of your comments on there as well as to uh, why we don't like to see braided hoses in the UK. And it's just one of those things. It's weird, isn't it? In the, the UK, we don't like to see braided hoses, but we also don't mind seeing all the pipes clipped on the wall. Riddle me that. So the product that we had before, as I said, had the valve on the side of the toilet. So the first thing I'm going to say to you now is that we are going to have the toilet going back into here on this frame that we've previously installed, but we're we're going to have a valve this time that's mounted on the wall I'd say somewhere around here I'll do a little bit of measuring out to make sure that I get it exactly where I want it and flex my bicep while I do it oh and by the way I did have a bit of a leak that's because I thought I'd turn the water off I flushed the toilet the outtake of the catastrophe is for AL Army members only all right she's a big old girl ah so again, we've got here what I've expected. We've got our air brake device here that's really important because it allows us to have this integrated effect of the B-Day in the toilet like it is now. But we've got an air brake there, which means it's compliant with UK rules for having water backfilling down to the system. So it's really important that we've got that. It's very easy to clean. Just by taking this bit out at the end here, you can whip that out and that's it. It's done nice and easily. And then underneath, we've got the connections that we had last time. But as we've already got pre-mixed water going into this, we only have one connection. It wasn't like the one we did earlier, where we had both mixed connections going into it. When it comes to the frame that we can use for this, we use exactly the same frame, the same fittings. There's a small difference with the installation of this toilet, obviously because we're moving the valve from the toilet to the wall. So let's firstly get the pipe work cut out behind me and then we can rearrange that, get our valve in and I'll show you why I'm putting the valve at a certain depth, what I'm mounting the valve actually on because I think that's really important and how we're gonna get that pipe tart purge through commissioned and installed. Let's get on with it. So first things first, I want to get rid of the water inside our pipework before we want to do any work to it. And this is just a handy thing for you to know if you're going to go in and do plumbing in general, how to purge pipes. So we find the highest point. We've got the water off already, like I said. This is pretty much the highest point on this system. And I'll probably just slacken off the nut on this as well. Now I get my stubby underneath on this cold one here. And we should finally get a little bit of water out. Yeah, there we go. And we'll do the same with the hot side. So we should finally get a little bit out of the hot. Exactly the same sort of thing. <laughs> it's one of them ones. It's never going to stop. <laughs> so whilst that is draining down, let's have a look at the valve that we're going to be installing on the wall. It's slightly unusual. It's probably not going to be the layout that you'd usually expect in the UK. So always take note of this and always just make, make sure you read the instructions, but they're nicely marked out anyway. We've got the cold coming in here. We've got the hot coming in at the bottom and we've got our mixed out coming out of here. On the plastic shroud that's disposable, we're throwing this away later on in the process. We've got a minimum and a maximum mark. That is for the depth that we want to be setting this to our finished wall level. So that's really important we take notice of that. We've got half inch female insert so I'm going to be using half inch male irons onto 15 mil copper compression to get this in um, and it's really really very simple. If we can get this mounted nice and straight at the right depth and get our pipe work to it nice and neatly then we're on to a winner on this job already. So this is our cold pipe here and this is our hot pipe. 
We know that our cold will still have to continue up here so it can feed the feed to the toilet itself, to the flush. And then also we need that mixed feed going out to the toilet. So it's more of an idea of like how I'm gonna plan this. I know where I want my minimum piece to be because I think if I have my minimum there, I know I've only got a 10 mil covering to go on this. That's gonna easily be covered up in this nice little min max bit here. You guys wouldn't normally have to cut out all this pipe work on a normal job, but I thought you'd just like to see it anyway. The great thing about frame toilets is you can use the frame as part of your stabilization when you're installing it, which is perfect for me on this job because then I can tie in the set seven by two big plank of wood at the back, which is what we're gonna be mounting our B-Day valve on. Right, so now I'm just gonna get these all done up nicely. So I've stepped this back a little bit. It's not touching that pipe, don't worry. That means that we're gonna get the right depth within the tolerance of our minimum and maximum lines that we've got on here. This is exactly the sort of thing you'll get with any product like this. You'll get this with tiling as well. So consider all of those bits. Are you gonna be putting a board on for the tiles? Are you tiling? Are you doing what we're doing here where we're using a, a actual standard board? All these questions you should ask yourself when you're doing this. It's just one of those things you're constantly thinking, isn't it? It's, it's the job of plumbing. I use Loctite for my irons. As you can see, I've just put them on here, but you can use PTFE or hemp or paste or the usual thread seal that you usually use. I've got these totally the wrong way around these grips but there we go. The guy I did my apprenticeship with, oh, well, I did my apprenticeship with my dad but I, I did it with another guy because it was a national firm but uh, he would be having a right go at me at the moment. We have got them the wrong way around. <laughs> now when it comes to where you want this you could have it central to this, you could have it central from the centre of that to this. I'm just going to go roughly central between these two points here. That's where I'm going to site this. So now I'm fixing on some copper pipe stubs to the bottom of the valve before I attach it to the wood. The main reason for this is I can then tighten up the compression fittings before I put it up against the wall and make sure everything's okay and tightened just how I want it. So look how we're making this up now. We're, we're getting to a point, aren't we? I think you guys, a lot of you plumber parts guys have been watching for yonks and you know exactly where we're going with this. You're just like, yeah, I can see what he's doing here. I know I shouldn't have done the, the middle one last, but I wanted to. <laughs> I don't know why, but I did. Oh. So as you guys know, for me, pipe work is pipe work and practice makes perfect. Make sure you get the valve nice and level with a little boat level, and then be really good with all the pipe work that you do. I know that no one's ever gonna see this. It's always gonna be covered away, but do a good job because at least then you'll know that you've done a good job. So as you can see here, we're getting our hot and cold in exactly where we need to, and also our mixed out, ready to go over to the back of the B day. Right then guys, so we've got all that lot piped up. I'm now gonna turn the water on. We've got the valve just behind me turned off. The great way of doing it like this, it means that we can pressure test all our pipe work before we put that wall back on. Peace of mind for you guys, peace of mind for me, peace of mind for everybody in the deep blue sea, which hopefully we won't get because we won't have any leaks. Right, so the only way we can actually pressure test this very quickly is just to whip this off, and then we can open our valve both ways. We're not finished with this bit yet. We need to make sure we've still got it. So that's that way done. That's the other way done. Now I can just open this up here, but we are now open up to this valve. So all the pipe work that I can see here has been pressure tested now, and I'm happy that that's going to work okay. Let's just prove that to you. Now I'm just gonna have a quick clear up just around this area. We'll measure up and cut the hole for this. Oh, don't you wish all clearing up was this quick and easy? So how these work, we've got our mixed water supply coming in here. It goes up into our air brake. Now, if water is coming through here at a really low rate, you'll see it drop into this and then go into the toilet bowl. But if it's coming in at a normal kind of rate, so that we've actually got this fully open, that will come around here, through this tube, into here and then out, of our spout here that we can adjust the direction of. We can remove, so it's really, really easy to clean. And I'll show you soon how to change our flush as well. I'm gonna use the same panel board that we used earlier to demonstrate how easy it is for us to do this. It's very simple, this procedure. If I could just find me bloody tape, oh baby. Oh, I need a pencil that's actually got some lead in it. So I measure across to the center there, 68. I've got a rough height area already. And then off from the bottom of the floor, 41.2. God, I tell you, I wasn't far off, was I? We can go a bit bigger because mercifully, we've got quite a large shroud that is gonna be used to cover any hole that we've got around there. So let's go for the slightly larger size. 
obviously if we were doing tiling, stuff like that, this would be a really a different process. But we don't need to worry about this on this job. I'm doing a demonstration for you so you can see how these work. Now look. Wow, exactly right on our depth. That's beautiful. Look at that. How cool is that? So we're now just going to prepare this toilet bidet in exactly the same way we did in the other video. Now I'm going to snip that off. I might re-put another one of those on later, but I want the flexibility now to be able to get this on where I want it to go. I'm going to get our clamps sorted out. And here's a brief recap on how we measure the clamps for this and then how we cut back our stubs. Pop on the clamp and the retaining plastic piece so they hold the clamps in position on the toilet. Then insert our handy Allen keys that we're going to use to tighten these up in a minute. Once you've done that, you want to measure from the back of the toilet to exactly where our receiver clamps go. Making sure there's plenty of thread still inside the receiver clamp, you can now cut the thread to size, making sure you've got at least 20 millimeters of thread inside the receiver clamp, or rotate the receiver clamp up and down the thread. Again, making sure there's at least 20 millimeters of thread still inside the receiver clamp, making sure that the receiver clamp dimple lines up correctly with where our allen key is going to be screwing in in a minute. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to, well let's just see how this goes on very quickly and then we'll see whether we need to make any adjustments to the length of this pipe because this pipe might be a bit too long for what we want. You know what, I'm just going to cut that now and get that done. Now I can already pop on our wire just for this, our pipe sorry, and because this is on a rubber we don't have to go crazy about tightening it up. So there we go, that'll be nipped up now. Now it's a matter of just popping everything back on, like we've done before. <clears throat> God, guys, it is a system that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Who designed this? Because they are a legend. Now all we do is use the easy to access Allen keys underneath to tighten up those grub screws, making sure that our lovely Vitra Bide toilet is firmly fixed back to the wall and is gonna easily take our weight via the frame. Right then, so let's do the finishing touches. Uh, really, really easy, very, very easy bit to do. All we need to do is take off the shroud that we had on earlier. Screw this little beast on here, pop this on. Now the upright position is that square, like that. Mate, that's so cool. Such a cool job sometimes. Once you've got the handle where you want it, use the right size Allen key underneath to tighten up the grub screw and fit the handle in position. Right, so here's the first go. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which one I prefer now. I am really... <laughs> Well, do I prefer it on there or on the wall? I mean, the thing about having it on the wall is that our pipe work can be anywhere. I could have had it on the wall up here, or I could have had it over there. I mean, that's got its advantages. I suppose a slight disadvantage is that if you do have it miles away, which you're never gonna do, are you? You're always gonna have it within the arm's reach of the toilet. So it's a little bit more pipe work for everything to get hot. So let's bring it over to the hot side and just see. Oh yeah, here we come. So there we go. And now we know as well, we've got that peace of mind if we do have a backfilling issue, let's face it, it's going to have to be quite a high up backfilling issue. Um, we've got our air brake here. If I just turn this off and just bring this on slowly, this is where our tube goes through. You can see a little bit of water running down from a minute ago, but look, this is where we'll get a small stream of water if we just turn this on very slowly. And that is our air brake working and draining down into the toilet. If we have this come on fully, like we would normally use it, it goes straight through. It will not go into there. So that's how these work. It's a really, really good idea. When it comes to our insert here, just like I pointed out in the previous video, we can alter the flush. And this is the same across the whole range, like I said in video number one. Um, if we want to have a higher flush, we can take this out. Very easy to do. Just grab this and pull it. Ooh, he says it's easy. There you go. Now we can have a slightly larger flush here, or we can take it out altogether. I've been taking it out altogether. And just be aware when you pop this back in, that that flush might mean that it comes all the way around the rim. Just really like it, really like, really like how clean it is. You know, I really, I think it's a lovely idea. I cannot wait to fit one of these in my house. 
definitely going to look forward to using these. I've never used a bidet before, so if you've had first time experience using a bidet in your life, comment below and let me know what it was like. I'd be very interested to hear. Again, when installing the toilet seat, do what I did here and read the instructions properly. And also a little tip, read them all the way through before you actually start doing it and refer to them while you're doing it. It's a really good idea and something I learned off my wife. But there we go. Anyway, and it's the same principle when it comes to the buttons. If you want to see how we did that, refer back to the first video. I've left links to that below. So then guys, there you go. The second beast that I've installed. Absolutely amazing. I actually slightly prefer the design of this toilet. It's a bit more curvy at the front, but you know what toilets are like. Everyone's got their own opinion of what they want, what they want in their home and how they want it to work. And that's why it's great that Vitra have come up with an idea that means you can either have one of these valves on the side of your toilet, like we looked at a few weeks ago, or this type here that's obviously on in there at the moment. Really, really impressed with how all this works. Lovely, lovely installation. Um, oh, trying to figure out which one I'm going to fit at my house. But that's going to be in a few videos time. And finally, to cover off a few questions I got in the first video, this B-Day is EN1717 compliant because it has an integrated air gap that protects the household drinking water supply. There's no electrical connection required. It's a three-in-one package, so you've got toilet, B-Day function, and the soft close seat. There's also the Vitra Hygiene Glaze, and it's a rimless pan as well. In the next B-Day video that I'm gonna be doing, we're gonna be installing and actually responding to one of the comments that you guys left, saying, what about if I want a B-Day, one of these B-Days with all the flush and everything on there, but I don't have a cavity to hide all that frame in? Well, we'll be looking at that solution in a couple of weeks' time. It's not gonna be next week's video. I'm staggering out these ones. I don't want you to get B-Day fatigue. So we'll be putting that one out in a few weeks' time. But in the meantime, pop over to Vitra's website, see if there's any designs there you like and definitely answer my question as well what you think about me not ever using a bidet before and I'm going to be installing one of these in our fourth and final video at my bathroom at home so I hope you've enjoyed today's video please hit the subscribe button please comment below as to what you think about it especially if you're English or British uh, because these aren't very widespread in the UK um, and we did get quite a lot of comments on the first video about well what are you Brits just filthy or something <laughs> but yeah so I hope you've enjoyed the video guys please come back next week and remember if there's one thing you've got to do that's hold tack we'll see you later you've always wound your bum with tyler paper but now it's time to end our love that caper it's basic thing is important to you you've not got enough room in your bathroom I hope all of you enjoyed this plumber parts video, y'all. I hope all of you subscribe and you learn a little bit more about how to fit a BD in your bathroom. How can you believe the fact that you save so much space by having one BD and one toilet in one product? Anyway, I'll see you in the next plumber parts video. Make sure to comment below, hit the like button, and join the AM Army if you want to have something to do with selecting this song and watching me record it live. Anyway, see you in the next video. You heard it first.